The Bible teaches that the godly individual is like a tree planted by rivers of water. This morning's sermon is titled, Growing Deep Roots. I try to you know, get a picture that would illustrate this. You know, if you think about uh, a large tree, uh, very often its roots will grow as, as wide as its longest branches. It is vital that we grow deep and wide roots as Christians. You know, healthy roots, think about a tree, it provides that plant stability, you know, on those stormy days, you know, sometimes you'll see those trees uprooted that maybe weren't growing as they should. So again, healthy re roots provide the stability and nourishment a tree needs. And so if we as Christians, if we're not deeply rooted, we risk become spiritually unstable and malnourished. And so this morning, let's focus on reaching new depths in our faith, growing deep roots. And there's three points I'd like to share with you this morning about this. Number one, water. All right, let's think about water. You know, in hot, dry sand dunes, you don't see many trees, do you? And one of the major reasons for that is a lack of sufficient water. Again, looking at Psalm 1, it teaches the godly person is like a tree planted by rivers, right? Plural, rivers of water. And because of that abundance of water, the metaphor, the illustration continues. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall pr uh, prosper. Psalm 1 verse 3. You know, in your faith, do you ever feel like you're, you're perhaps not producing the kind of fruit you want? Do you ever feel like your leaves are withering? And we ought to seek out water in those situations. The life-giving water that Jesus provides. Jesus said the following... Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. The water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. John 4 verse 14. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a more appropriate symbol for life than water. I think water pretty much in a certain sense is life. A human being can survive for about three days without water. Think about that. It's not too long, is it? And in this hot Georgia weather, it's probably like, you know, half a day, you know. But, you know, water is so essential to, to life, not only for us as, as human beings, but for life in general on earth. And Jesus says here that he offers water. Water which gives everlasting life. And the water that he gives is, is life for your soul. The water Jesus is speaking about here, if we could sum it up in one word, I think it's ultimately himself, his ministry, his teachings, his sacrifice, the life that he lives today. I believe this is the, the water that he is describing through everything he's done. You can have eternal life. Um, again, thinking about a, a different psalm. The beginning of Psalm 63 says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. <clears throat> you know, life without faith in God is like trying to survive in the desert. It's not a good way to continue on in this world. May we be well hydrated by soaking up the teachings of Christ. And doing this will strengthen your roots. Again, thinking about growing deep roots this morning, consider soil. Right? Good soil. Grow deep roots by being planted in good soil. Now, if you have your Bible and you'd like to follow along this morning, I encourage you to 
Um, turn with me to the book of Hosea. Um, I'd like to read from Hosea in just a, a moment. Now in your Bible, the, the section of, of the prophets begins with Isaiah. So Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. Wait, yeah. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, then Daniel, then Hosea. So I just mentioned that because, you know, sometimes the, uh, the minor prophets can be overlooked at times. Um, in this morning's Bible class, we studied the parable of, of the sower. And in that parable, Jesus spoke about poor soil that's filled with rocks. And because of those rocks, you know, plants could not take deep root. And so they grow, but they quickly die because the roots couldn't, uh, again, grow deeply and again, reach the proper depth for water and nutrients that they need. The rocky ground in the parable is a symbol for the heart. And he said this. He that received the seed in the stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy, or immediately with joy, receiveth it. Yet he hath not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Matthew 13, verses 20 and 21. May we heed Jesus' warning. If there is you know, bad soil injuring a crop, then the farmer, he's going to do everything he can to fix that. Again, if there's rocks down there preventing his, his plants from growing, he's going to dig those up and, and get them out of the field. In the same way, if there's something in our hearts impeding the word of God, may we have the courage to remove that stone, uh, remove those kinds of obstacles. Again, with this in mind, I'd like us to read from Hosea chapter 10. And uh, let's start with verse 9. Hosea chapter 10, verse 9. O Israel, thou hast sinned from the days of Gibeah. There they stood, the battle in Gibeah against the children of iniquity did not overtake them. It is in my desire that I should chastise them and the people shall be gathered against them when they shall bind themselves in their two furrows. And Ephraim is as a heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn. But I passed over upon her fair neck and I will make Ephraim to ride. Judah shall plow and Jacob shall break his clods. And verse 12 is what I'd really like to focus on this morning. Verse 12, he says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies. Because thou didst trust in thy way and the multitude of thy mighty men. A lot of interesting things being said here in Hosea. I'm not going to cover all of them. But if you look at verse 9, the prophet recount, recounts uh, past transgressions that the people of Israel had made. And he's, he's referencing an Old Testament story where specifically the tribe of Benjamin uh, was, was very rebellious against God and his will. And he's using this to point out to the people of Israel in his time that there were, that, that rebellious attitude was still alive and active. In verses 11 through 13, we find this agricultural metaphor. And the Lord desired them, notice it says, sow righteousness. God wanted his, his people to sow or plant righteousness and from that reap the crop of mercy. Sow righteousness and reap in mercy. Now, if you go down to verse 13, instead of doing that, they weren't sowing righteousness. It says they were sowing wickedness and reaped iniquity. And there are some who are not putting their trust in God. And so Hosea here was urging them to make a positive change, to change their hearts. Now, again, look at verse 12. Verse 12, we find the phrase, 
fallow ground. Maybe not a common thing we say. Fallow ground is a plot of land which is unplowed, uncultivated. It's just, just land, just left to itself. So breaking up the fallow ground is what a farmer does to get the, the land ready to plant a crop. He, he plows the field, right? That's what breaking up fallow ground means. So again, look at verse 12. Again, it says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness on you. What a beautiful verse that is. When we seek the Lord, there will be times we need to break up the fallow ground in our hearts. Again, the whole point of doing this is to seek God, to plant in our hearts what is good, to plant the seed of his word within us. So lastly, as we think about growing deep roots, what kind of seed are you planting? Again, if you would like to follow along, I, I encourage you to turn in your Bible to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll be reading from there in just a moment. Now, of course, all roots are not good. Doubt, depression, anxiety... Blind hatred, immorality, and resentment. These things can take deep roots in a person, right? But you don't want those things, do you? And if you don't want those things in your heart, you must rip them out. And in their place, plant what is good. The Bible says, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. Hebrews 12 verse 15. How do you stop bitterness and other negative qualities? How do you stop that from taking root? And here the, the proverb or Proverbs, this is the Proverbs, the Hebrews writer, right? Proverbs is a different book. The Hebrews writer Gives us a one word answer. Diligence. Again, how do you get a garden filled with weeds? Not by diligence, right? I used that illustration before, right? You, you do nothing. You just sit back and take it easy. The weeds will do their own thing. Well, the same holds true for your heart. Our culture today is working 24-7 to fill your heart with weeds. If you lack diligence, the weeds are going to creep in one by one. It's inevitable. So again, with this in mind, and again, the word diligence in mind, let's read from 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1. And let's start with verse 5. 2 Peter 1 verse 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So notice there are things we should add to our faith. There's a, a growing process, so to speak. And he says these things ought to be in you. Right? These ought to be in us as Christians. And again, one of the first things he mentions there in verse 5 is diligence. Diligence. Diligence is defined as constant effort. Those who are diligent can have the good things described in this passage we've just read. Right, think about it. If uh, we have any gardeners here, or even if you'd like to plant a garden one day, or you know, grow something in some pots like some cherry tomatoes or something, right? Well, if you want to grow squash, we all understand you have to you know, plant some squash seeds. If you want to grow corn, you plant corn. 
right, if you want some fresh cucumbers, you plant those cucumber seeds, right? Well, if you want the good life, then you must plant the right kind of seed. Again, I think uh, pursuing what is truly good, it's not like the weeds. Uh, it doesn't happen just for the most part. It just doesn't happen automatically. It's something that, you, again, you have to constantly seek out, make a priority. Again, one of the, the Bible words is diligence. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. Again, if we want these good things in our life, again, if we don't want bitterness and resentment and blind hatred, if we don't want those things taking root in us, again, we have to put something in its place. Again, if you want love and joy and peace and these good qualities in your life, you have to plant the word of God in your heart. So water, soil, and seed. Let us absorb the life-giving water of Jesus' teachings. May we prepare the soil of our hearts by removing anything which impedes that word. Let us break up the fallow ground because today is the day to seek the Lord. And let us plant what is virtuous. May we grow deep roots, putting our trust in God. Uh, this morning, I'd like to leave you with this final verse. James 1, verse 21. This is the New King James. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. And it's the, the word of God, the gospel message. This is what informs us about Christ, his life, everything he's done and everything he continues to do for us. And that is why that word, that implanted word can and will save your soul. So if there's anyone here this morning who has not yet received that word, we encourage you to do so. Uh, believe in Christ, believe in the gospel message, repent of dead works, confess your faith in him, obey his command to be baptized. And again, come up from that watery grave to begin uh, your new life as, as a Christian, right? having your sins forgiven. And uh, if we can aid you uh, in doing that, uh, we do have a baptistry here. If we could offer prayers or encouragement, uh, please let us know by coming forward as we stand and as we sing.